Hi, I'm David from Electric Teaching, and we're continuing on with part seven of our quadratic formula. We now want to take the results that appear on the shell and actually have all the results about the vertex and the symmetry line and have it appear on the game window or the pi, pi game window. So what we want to do is uh, come down here to make some room for the window to appear. And you can see I've already added it in. I want to add in width instead of just width and height. I'm going to add in a plus 400. So this will give me the width of 400 plus 400 more. And the reason I don't want to change this width over here is because we use that in making the grid and many parts of the um, uh, graphing aspects. So I don't want to mess with the 400 width line. I just want to bump over the window to have 400 extra pixels so that I can display the answers that often appear over here in the shell. So let's see how this works, adding the 400. I'm going to run the module and do a 1x squared, maybe a 3x and a 1. And you can see that I do have a plain, plain white space here that I have room, created room, to add the solutions that we see back over here. For instance, the symmetry line and the vertex point and the x-intercepts, the solutions. Okay, so that's what we want to do right now. You can also notice that I probably should add an extra increment in the loop that creates the uh, light blue graph grid in the backgrounds because it looks like it just didn't add in the last line there. And so that might want to change your increment. I'll let you do that. Um, let's close this and let's make some, let's make the screen show um, the answers that often appear over here in the shell, that appear over here in the shell. So I'm going to come down to right by where I graph the equation, where I graph the parabola, and make some room. Let's see, we want to add a little comment here that says basically we are displaying, displaying the results. Uh, sim line, I call it symmetry line, I often say sim line when I'm working with my students, vertex, and zeros, which are the x-intercepts or the solutions if we set the equation equal to zero. So let's go ahead and set up the commands that will put text on the screen. And that's basically all we're doing is we're making a text a text line and we're going to put it into a variable and then we're going to display it to the screen. For instance, I'm going to make a variable here called sim line, set it equal to, and here's where I'm going to use the font variable I set up way back in probably part one or part two of the video sequence. So way up here I have a font command that takes the system font using Pygame Library, takes the system font, sets it up so that whenever I use the word font, the variable font, it's going to grab Arial and 18, uh, size 18, and use that on the screen. Uh, sometimes I actually use the word my font just to get a distinguishing, uh, excuse me, a difference between the word font being pulled up from the library. So I could put the word my font here, whatever I name this is uh, up to you. and. Uh, you just need to make sure you call it back up and use that appropriately. So let's see, we have sim line is going to be equal to font, as the font variable I've established. Okay, and we're going to say render. Render is a command Python recognizes uh, to display or to create a, 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 te a line of text, basically. I'm going to use a double quote. Some, uh, sometimes I use a single quote here. Sometimes I use a double quote. I think I'll just use double quotes this time. Uh, they both work. So I'm going to put in the, the text line that I want to appear on the screen is the symmetry line is at x equal. And this is where I'm going to stop the text and put a plus sign to add the variable vx and the way you do that is you do a command line called str which means to basically turn it into a string and it takes the variable vx which is my vertex x coordinate which is my sim line as well and it takes the vx value which is a quantity and makes it into a plain text and will add it onto this line in green 
you can sell you can see that the font reader uh, Python is telling us all the all the attributes you need to have in it if you don't fill in every one of the let's see one two three four parameters here I believe uh, it, they will default to the uh, default to certain ones so I fill out the first three parameters here um, when I do this so I'm going to go comma and now the anti-alias I usually just put one for true I'm not exactly sure what that is I can let you look that up if you're very curious. I just know this one works this way. The color, oh, let's go with red. So I'm going to do the RGB colors, 255, uh, which is all the red you can do, uh, 0, comma, 0. So this will be the color of the text, um, of this uh, text that's in green here, plus the VX number at the end. And I'll close parentheses. Now we basically want to place it on the screen. This is called blitting, B-L-I-T, blitting. And what I do is I say with the screen variable, meaning my, uh, pi, my pi game display that's made the window called screen. So on the screen, blit, blit, the sim line instructions. So you always say what to blit and where to blit it. And so I'm going to give it the, using the width, but I want to nudge it a little bit more than just the width, length, and X. I'm going to go width plus 20 pixels. Actually, let's make it 10 pixels so that we're 10 pixels off the edge of the graph. Comma, I'm going to go 20 pixels down from the top of the window. Don't forget the Y axis is basically upside down from our traditional math days. So that is 20 pixels down from the top of the window and 10 pixels in from the width command or the width variable, which takes us just beyond the graph. So this will blit the text line to the screen in a color at a, the location of desire. Um, let's see, I'm going to run this and see if this works. So let's go run, see if I made any mistakes, which happens, which does happen. Okay, we're going to do, let's do a one, three, one, just like I did last time. Um, oh, I got a little error in there. I, this may not work because it just had a, a memory in there. You can see it right here. Let's just run it again real quick. Forgive me. So I'm going to run the module again. Okay, it's uh, barely off the screen here. I apologize, but that's bringing up the question of which A turn. So I'm going to go ahead and type it in. One, three, one again. And I do have an error. Oh, yeah, it says down here, I forgot to globalize my VX. I use the word globalize. It's basically make the VX variable global. And we've talked about making the VX variable global, so I need to go do that. I apologize for the screens all shifting around, but I uh, needed to unfreeze the program first. And so I had to do a closed program command on the <clears throat> taskbar down below. And now I'm up here at the global command. And so I'm actually going to global every variable that I'm going to use down in my other function. Again, the reason I am making these variables global and it is so that the variables used in this function are understood by any other function in the program, specifically down here below. So let's see, we are going to need the VX and the VY, and capital VX comma capital VY. Probably going to need the discriminant D. I'm going to may have to display that number as well. And uh, probably going to display the solutions to the solutions looking up those variables. That's X1 and Y1, excuse me, X1 and X2. So I'm going to do X1 comma X2. And I think that's all the variables I'm going to need to display. If I may have made a mistake, I'll come back and adjust that. Let's run the program. Hopefully it works better this time. Asking me to save. It's asking me the first number. It's a 1x squared, maybe a 3x, and a 2. So I now have a parabola that's uh, per perfectly placed over on the left, and I can see my displaying of answers that's coming to life on the right. Close it. Let's keep going. Next thing I'd like to do is write a command that draws the symmetry line. So I'm trying to give a, trying to make this program feel like a real type of maybe tabulate program or some sort of program that a student would use to get a visual on while learning the attributes of quadratics and parabolas. So right here, I'm going to first type up a command to ask if they want to show the line. And so I'm going to do an instruct video, or excuse me, instruct variable, again, using the font render command. And I'm going to say, oh, select 
S on the keyboard, that is. So select S to show symmetry line or to graph in this case. I'll use the word graph. Graph symmetry line. Symmetry line. So that's all I need there. Put a period in quotes, comma, one, comma. Let's make this red, but a little bit darker red, meaning I'm going to let less, less, I'm going to, uh, excuse me, allow more red to come through uh, in the visual. So that means I'm shrinking the number, I believe. And again, I get my RGB's values uh, backwards and trying to explain them. I apologize if I am explaining that wrong. Um, but basically, this makes it a little bit darker red as the end product. So, and let's see, we need to blit this instruction. So I'm going to say screen dot blit. And what do we want to blit? Well, I want to blit the variable or the information in the variable, basically, instruct. Where do I want to blit it? Similar width. I'll nudge it in like it's outlined, maybe 10 extra pixels, so width plus 20. And I've learned from trial and error that size 18 takes up around 20 pixels or so. So the font that's being displayed above uh, to give it enough room, let's come down 25 pixels off of the first blit. So let's go to 45 off the off the top of the window and now i should have the instruction uh, select s to graph the sim symmetry line uh, appear right below the information about the symmetry line now let's add the programming part that'll give us the graph of the sim line so down here in our keyboard and mouse actions we're going to put a command if event type is double equals asking if it's actually equal to it this is a Pygame library idea, so I could type pygame.key down, but because I've installed Pygame way up at top, you rem might remember I've uh, changed the way I've uh, imported everything out of Pygame up here. I can now not have to use Pygame for everything that is a Pygame library, for instance. I can now say all caps, has to be all caps, just is the event type a key down command, colon. Hit return, you should outline nicely. So if it is, we need to ask what key. So if event key double equal, okay, capital K underscore S is basically the identification of when the S key is selected. So if the S key is selected, then we want to use the Pygame library draw line command and we are going to draw the line onto the screen first thing we tell it is where what color i'm going to match the color with the the text above that's asking to draw the sim line so the dark red 200 comma zero comma zero close parentheses and now from where to where so i'm going to use the width divided by two is the starting point that's the center basically so center of the graph, not now the center of the screen because we've opened it up further, but the center of the graph. And so width divided by two and where we want to do is basically move it the VX left or right. So what I'm going to do is add VX and I got to do times K so that it does it, the amount of VXs uh, in K pixels. Now I'll have the graph, uh, uh, the X coordinate lined up perfectly. We're just going to simply run this from 10 pixels on the top all the way down to maybe 10 pixels off the bottom. So how I write the two location here, let's open up the window so you can be sure to see this. So we're going to graph from this X, Y coordinate right here with divided by two plus the VX change, basically. Same width, same X coordinate width divided by 2 plus vx star k comma now i'm going to use the height command minus 10 pixels so basically this will graph from the top to the bottom about 10 pixels off the top and bottom along the vx symmetry line and the last thing i need to do is tell it how many pixels wide uh, i think i'll shoot for maybe i don't know five four pixels wide four let's do four pixels wide it's kind of a guess see how it looks and then fix it if we don't like it. All right, let's run the programs. It's going to ask me to save. Yes, save. Let's see how this worked. So I've got uh, do a one, three, one. And so far the text was blitted correctly. 
Seems I've spaced things out nicely. It's listing where it is. Let's see if I hit the S key. I'm going to hit the S key. And I did get an error. Oh, I did type the wrong. You probably caught that when I did it. Let's see if I can fix this without losing the screen here. Sometimes I have to unfreeze it. Okay, excuse me one second. I need to unfreeze it. Again, I apologize for the screen shuffling as I had to shut it down and bring it back up. That's part of programming that, you know, sometimes we freeze the system with our code and you just kind of get used to it and hopefully find ways to deal with it without getting frustrated. You might have caught the error as I was typing it. I did not type what I said. That should have been VX right there. And that, I think, was the only error. Hopefully, let's try it again. Saving it. Let's give it a 131 again. And let's hit the S key. And sure enough, I do have the symmetry line drawn. Let's add in one more command real quick. So let's close the window. Come back over here. And I'd like to add a command, since we're working down here with the event keys, I'd like to add a command that asks us to rerun the program, in case you want to graph multiple items here. So if the event key is double equal k underscore underscore n, then all I do is say run my main again, and it should just dive right back into the program that is originally called up at the beginning of the program, or at the beginning of the code, or excuse me, when the program runs, this is the, the, the event that's called up at the start. So what I have do, what I'm doing, trying to do is just recall it up to see if it works. It would probably be good to put an instruction for that. So what I'm gonna do is, you know, a nice easy way to do this is I'm gonna copy this set of instructions right here, copy it, I'm gonna paste those instructions and just change it. I can use the same instruct variable over and over again because I'm just splitting it and then I don't need it anymore. So I can have it overlap, I can have the next line overlap and use the same instruction video. I'm going to say select n and to graph another equation or parabola, maybe you might want to say. Uh, let's make this in black. So I'm going to do this 0, 0, 0. As I recall, I think that's black again. I'm getting these ideas. So now I have the instructions ready to be blit. I'm going to blit that. Yeah, uh, let's blit that 10 off the edge. And this time, the way I'm going to have it blit, in case you change the heights and stuff later, I'll just say, you know, blit this height minus 30 pixels so that it's towards the bottom of the screen. So let's save and run. And I'm over my 15-minute mark, so I definitely want to conclude this lesson and see if everything's working here. Okay, so it did give me the instruction. If I type S, it'll graph the line. If I type N and come back, this is the hard part, I have to come back to the shell to see if it started up again, and I think it has successfully started up again and given me a different graph. So the N feature is working as well. Well, I've gone over my limit. Uh, my name is David from Electric Teaching, and I sure hope you're enjoying the lessons that I'm uh, doing, uh, excuse me, with the quadratic graph. I use this in my math class, so you're welcome to, if you're a teacher, to try to use this in your math class as well. Uh, thank you again, and I hope you're enjoying this.